yeah, the, you know, this like, oh, I've already put, put so much time and, and money into this that, you know, I, it just doesn't make sense for me to, to switch. Well, I mean, that that is that is a fallacy. This is Techie Personal Finance Bootcamp, where I help tech professionals in their 20s and 30s balance a great life today without sacrificing their future possibilities. I'm your host, Lucas Caceres, certified financial planner and founder of Level Up Financial Planning, where I help educate, coach, and build strategies with my clients to help them take their financial confidence to the next level. Here's an important compliance disclosure. This podcast is for informational purposes only and are not to be considered recommendations. It is recommended you consult your trusted financial professional before implementing any information obtained from the Techie Personal Finance Bootcamp. Welcome to season 2.0 of Techie Personal Finance Bootcamp. Before we kick off this episode and I share Chad's awesome story with you, just want to provide you a little bit of background. So I actually recorded this back with Chad in November 2019 well before COVID-19 and it's really interesting just kind of going back and listening to this recording that a lot of this stuff is going to be super valuable to today's day and age especially with a lot of things going on in the economy everyone working from home lots of huge value so it's actually an awesome thing that I this kind of fell through the cracks as I was doing my final push for season one and had a lot of stuff going on uh, with my business wise as well and so I'm happy that this actually fell through the cracks because I think this is a good opportunity to launch this episode along with my financial education episode kind of side by side at the launch of season 2.0. Chad is does not have a technical role with his employer but great story great part of the tech community and is adding a ton of value for the startup that he's working at so I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to Techie Personal Finance. I'm excited because I have Chad Crabtree on, and Chad is the editor-in-chief at Career Karma, which is a San Francisco startup that provides career coaching, mentorship, and job training program that matches aspiring tech workers with different opportunities. So I'm excited to have him on. His educational background is actually in humanities and social sciences, so it's not your typical techie that you think that would be coming on the show, and he has made the leap into the tech world through his work with Career Karma. So if you are a listener of this show, you'll probably actually be surprised because I actually met Chad on Twitter when normally most of my clients and connections have come through like LinkedIn. Chad and I started a dialogue on Twitter and yeah, we just reached out and I thought he'd be a good opportunity for him to come and share his story on my podcast. Thanks for joining us, Chad. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And so I'm curious about kind of early on in your career. So you, you went... Uh, to school for social sciences and humanities and, and kind of what what the heck happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so I, I got my bachelor's degree in English and political science with the intent of becoming, well, initially it was to become a high school teacher. Cool. Then I was encouraged while I was in college to maybe pursue a PhD and, and teach college, yeah. uh, which was it was some bad advice, I think. Um, <laughs> not not exactly a great job market out there for academics anymore. But yeah, so once I graduated, I kind of hopped around to some different jobs. I was tutoring high school students for a while. And then just to kind of make ends meet because I, you know, I had massive student debt and yeah, um, yeah. and a, a lot of these kind of financial issues, I decided to start doing some freelance writing on the side. And, and through doing that, I found Career Karma just earlier this year and, and it kind of just snowballed from there. Awesome. So what kind of put your interest in going to school for that originally? Was there some other interest or was it just kind of based off of what people thought about who you were at that time at that very young age? They said, hey, you should go to, to school for this. Yeah, it, that's exactly right. So when I was when I was growing up, you know, I, I my parents will always talk about how I was always like playing school in the garage and playing teacher and this kind of stuff. And so it just kind of seemed like that was the thing I was supposed to do. Yeah. And, and not only that, but you know, when you, when you major in something like English literature, you get the question all the time. Oh, so what's your major? Oh, English, English literature. And then the response is, Oh, are you, you going to teach? Yeah. Cause that's, you know, wrong or right. That's what most people think is, is what you're going to do. And so, and so that was, that was what I thought was going to be best for me. It just seemed like the easiest path or, or at least the clearest path. Yeah. Um, yeah. It made sense to you as they're saying, like, oh, right. yeah, I guess, I guess I'm connected to the dots too. That it's logical. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it's, it's a lot easier to make that leap than, you know, English to, you know, some other, you know, maybe better paying career or more stable career or something. But so, yeah, I, I just kind of fell into that. And 
realized along the way, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I, I did spend this time tutoring high school that I, I'm not, I'm not great at it, to be honest with you. Um, it, I, I don't, uh, I have a, a kind of a hard time connecting with kids and uh, at least on the level that you can connect with them in that environment. Yeah. And so, so I pretty, I learned pretty quickly that maybe this wasn't for me and I should probably try something else. No, that's good. You figured out early on and, and felt comfortable and to kind of be able to make that shift. I'm sure it, how, how long did it take from kind of getting that experience and realizing this isn't going to work to you like start turning the gears on making something happen so that you can transition? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I was tutoring part-time for about two, almost two full school years. And I, I think I, I learned within that first year that this probably wasn't going to be right for me, yep. but you know, there was, there just wasn't anything else readily available for me to start doing. And I was, I was in kind of the point, uh, you know, where there was some pressure from family to kind of, it's like, you know, I think it's time that you really make a decision here. So, yeah. so I was planning on going to get my master's degree in education. I had, you know, signed up and uh, enrolled in everything. And then right, right before that kind of got started, I, 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 things with career karma started picking up. So I, I pretty quickly jumped on that bandwagon and, and <laughs> got rid of everything else. So. No, that's, oh man, it sounds like it, you could have potentially dodged a bullet there because that, that's not a cheap, cheap path to go, no. especially if it's not one that was going to serve you long term. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, I, yeah, I already have, you know, plenty, plenty of, plenty of debt that I'm, I'm dealing with as it is. And then to add on, you know, tens of thousands more for a master's program that to do something that I, I wasn't really passionate about, it, it was a pretty easy choice when it came down to it. Yeah, it, it's scary, though, because kind of similar to you, and this happens to so many people, and I'd say a majority of people is you just kind of think like, oh, this if I do this, this is going to make this better. But really, you're right. just kind of creating a snowball of a mess. And it's it's because like society, family, and, and these types of things like start to push your momentum that way. And you think if you just kind of keep running in that direction, it's going to get better. Right. But yeah, it could have potentially been way, way worse with it. more student loan debt and yeah. frustration for sure. That's, I'm glad that you found Career Karma. Tell us, so how did you find it as a way of, because I know it kind of has an education, it's talking about career change. Were you planning on going into the tech career as a, a position or did you find Career Karma as for an employment position? And you're like, oh, that's, that's what I want to do. Right. So basically what happened was I, I was just doing freelance writing and some editing just on the side. And, you know, I, I'll, most of what I was doing was writing just these awful blog posts that you see, like, you know, top 10 ways to like TIG weld stainless steel. And I, so I would have to learn how to weld stainless steel and then write oh, a blog geez. post about it. And it was, it was horrible. So I, I don't recommend going that route to anybody. I think, I think I learned through, a lot of crazy, crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, lear I learned a lot about um, welding. I learned a lot about swimming pools, backyard swimming pools. So a lot of, a lot of useless knowledge, but so yeah, I mean, freelance writing can be great, but when you're first getting started, it's, it is really a slog because you're going to get paid very little yeah. to do just really like time intensive, tedious work. But through that process, I, I ran into Career Karma. They were looking for somebody to come on and just kind of copy edit maybe five to 10 uh, blog posts a week. Okay. And so I, I applied and I did not get the job. And, oh, geez. <laughs> and Arthur, one of the co-founders and the CTO of Career Karma said, hey, you know, stay in touch. You know, maybe we'll, they, there'll be something else later on. Yep. So about three weeks later, probably didn't wait long enough, but I waited about three weeks and I, I sent another message to him and they luckily were looking for somebody still. So, so they brought me on to do that. I, I made it in the second time. Awesome. And what do you, yeah. did you change anything? Like, or was it um, just the fact that you were persistent and, and they're a startup and they need people like that? Or I, I think it was that, I think, you know, the second time, the, the first time I, I had done a, a test article, a test edit mm -hmm. and you know, not really knowing what they were looking for. I, I, I might have not been as aggressive with my editing as I as I normally would have been. So the yeah. second time around, I just thought, you know, I'm just going to go for it and really, you know, do this the way I think it ought to be done. Nice. And and so that worked out a lot better. So yeah, for the I think it was only about two, two or three weeks that I was on that 
level of just doing, you know, maybe five to 10 a week. And then their current editor had to step back because she was actually pursuing a, a coding boot camp. Oh. Um, and so it just kind of left the door open for me to to kind of come in and take on more responsibility. And so from that point on, now I'm doing everything from content marketing to search engine optimization to PR outreach and just all kinds of stuff. And it's it's great because I'm, you know, I personally have no real technical background at all. Yep. <laughs> uh, so they just kind of, they just sort of took this uh, risk on me. And, and so far it's, it seems to be paying off for the both of us. So, Well, and I imagine you're super happy that you're able to just be super focused on what you had to do now rather than the freelance, like, oh, yep, I'm going to learn how to plunge out, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> right. do, so, do something crazy, which, yeah, I, I imagine like it's only a matter of time before you just get burnt out from from all that craziness. Now, now you get to focus and it sounds like you have a great team around you. And we talked a little bit before I hit the record button, just the team's like massive and kind of all over the country. So I'm sure that's add some excitement to the situation too. Yeah, all, all over the world. In fact, so we we're fully distributed. So we have we have people in Ukraine and Russia, Spain. Uh, we just added somebody from Cambodia. I mean, so we, we have people all over the world. And so one of the kind of great things about this this job is kind of learning not only this, you know, this tech content, but also learning how to work with and, and manage a remote team, something I've never really experienced before in any of the jobs that I've had. But not only just a remote team, but a remote team that, you know, is working from, you know, I don't know how many different time zones we're in, but it's a challenge, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Can you speak to some of the challenges? I think one of the things we interacted on and we we're both kind of on the same thread where was talking about remote work and I believe we were only focusing on the positives, but yeah, what, what are some of the challenges that you've kind of ran into since this is kind of a new territory for you? Yeah, I think the biggest challenge is is managing time because, you know, I, I think that's also one of the great benefits of it is it, in some ways it's a lot easier to manage your time when you're working remotely and you don't have somebody looking over your shoulder directly. But, you know, like this morning was a great example. So I, I woke up this morning and I've got, you know, 40 messages from people who've been working all night yeah and times for me yeah <laughs> and then having to kind of just get all that together and, and and make that work first thing in the morning can be can be kind of a challenge so but you know I, I think it's I think it's the best way to work honestly just I mean I've only been in this environment since June really but it, it's the level of stress that has been relieved from me being able to work remotely somewhat work at my own pace, but kind of just to be able to manage my own time, you know, and know that as long as I'm getting my work done, that get, getting done what's expected of me, yeah, that I can continue to kind of do things on, on my own system. That's huge. So the, the, the level of stress that I, that I don't have compared to having to get up every day and, you know, go through the slog of a commute and, and yeah, all this yeah. stuff. What's, what's um, the road and traffic going to be like today? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, we were just talking beforehand about weather and, yep. you know, just all these other things that you can't really plan for sometimes. Um, a lot of that gets relieved when, when you're doing remote work. Yeah, one, it, even from like the career karma, so jumping back even from out from where you're at, career karma is able to tap into talent across the world rather than just relying on people only in San Francisco or if it was, if career karma happened to be located somewhere else, like they have the potential to hire the best of the best from wherever they happen to be. And that's one of the cool things for my business is only just recently am I starting to have like a lot of local clients because of the SEO and stuff like that finally right. kicking in for me two years later. But prior to that, I have clients like as far out as Denver, which is like over an hour drive for me, Arizona, California, kind of all over the country. And right. without like Zoom and all these cool technology platforms, one of the reasons one of the many reasons I love technology is like it's made me be able to compete with other people, but same thing for career karma and you're able to get the best regardless of where they're at. So that's cool. Yeah, exactly. I, I think, you know, there's definitely something to be said for all these great tools that are out there. You know, at career karma, we use zoom, um, we use Slack and uh, you know, I, I'm constantly finding, you know, new tools that I can try and get, you know, our leadership to, to, pay money for for us because <laughs> yep. you know you, you just you see all the opportunities that are out there with with these different tools and the ways people are diff are innovating and that's especially important for us because you know we're trying to get people the training that they need 
to create these kind of tools and to find careers in in this kind of development. So, so it's it's always important for us to kind of stay up on on what kind of tools are being used and uh, innovated on. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's kind of getting to where I want to go in a second. But before we uh, get into that part of the interview, I'm curious as far as like, did you freak out when you were a few weeks into work and then all of a sudden the the head person walked away and, and you got tapped on the show like, hey, here's this opportunity for you. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't something you were expecting. Like, did you freak out? Did you have imposter syndrome? What, what was going through your mind at that kind of opportunity? That's a good question. So I, you know, initially, no, I, I didn't really hit that imposter syndrome, you know, barrier because for me, it was just like, oh, it was, it was just relief. It was like, oh, now I have, I have a full-time job now. <laughs> so I, I can stop worrying about that for once. Cool. Um, so, I mean, so that was a huge relief. I think it was maybe a week or so later that I kind of got hit with that. Like, oh, they're, they, they liked what I did that what I've been doing, that's great. But now they're expecting a lot more. And so, so they're, they're kind of expecting me to continue that velocity of kind of learning and growing and, and everything. And that's not something I'd ever really experienced before. All of my previous jobs, you know, they've not been in the startup world. They've not been in, in, in the, in the business world at all. You know, yeah. I've been working for public schools and, and things like that, where things get pretty stagnant and it's, there's not a whole lot of movement and growth as much as it ought to be. But so, you know, hitting that moment of, of like, oh, you know, this is, this is a constantly moving machine that, you know, expects me to be growing too. There was definitely that imposter syndrome of, of not just, you know, the expectation that I continue to grow, but that, that I continue to help grow the team and start taking on a leadership role, which again, you know, I, I've not managed a team before, especially, you know, in a publication like this. So it hit me pretty quickly that, yeah, I'm going to have to take this pretty seriously and, and spend not just the time that I have working directly, but also my, some of my free time, you know, learning and, and growing and, and get, finding as many resources and tools as I can to get better. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Cause yeah, you're an integral part of the team. So the success of Kura Karma partially kind of relies on you, but then also you get to see the coolness and the awesomeness as you see it grow and know that you you play a part in that too. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think that was, uh, you know, maybe pushing it out another couple of weeks from that. One of the things that kind of relieved some of that imposter syndrome was I started realizing, you know, oh, this is, it, the difference here is that this is a career in a field where I can actually see, you know, tangible results from things that I've done. Whereas, you know, it, it's it's hard to gauge how, how successful you've been when you're tutoring students, you know, I guess you could look at their report cards or something, but when it comes to the sort of the tech world and, and SEO and, and, you know, there, there are, you know, clear conversion goals and, you know, clear traffic goals to the website and things like that, that, you know, you can see actual numbers showing you whether or not you've been successful. And so, so that's been huge for me, you know, knowing that I actually have these clear goals and then knowing that, that I have different means of, of achieving those goals. That's been huge for me. Yeah. And it sounds like you have some say, at least as far as like recommending different tools and, and opportunities to kind of pivot and, and go in new directions. So I'm sure that's rewarding too, that although I know there's probably more ideas from everyone on the team than you guys could possibly pursue. That's kind of cool to understand and feel that your say matters and it'll be kind of considered. Yeah. And, you know, that's another great thing about sort of the remote work system with us anyway, is that, you know, we, most of our day-to-day communication is on Slack. And so whenever anybody has an idea, that's, you know, kind of somebody has a good idea. It doesn't necessarily just get lost the way it can if in, in, in yeah. a meeting or something. For sure. Yeah. In, in meetings, people are just waiting to get out of that thing and yeah. go do work <laughs> a majority exactly. of them, I'm sure. Uh, for a lot of startups, I'm sure it's not the case just because there's exciting stuff and you can't probably miss what's going on or right. you kind of fall behind. But um, I knew at least my traditional role when I was at a, a normal kind of traditional financial planning world, we m- had so many meetings, it did not make any sense. And I kept falling further and further behind. And all I could think about was like, all right, as soon as I get out of this, I need to run. I'm not going to be able to eat lunch now. And, and like all, all this crazy. Right. But no, yeah. it's like is a cool piece of technology for that alone. (laughs) 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, we use it. Uh, I think I, I probably use it more than anybody else, but I, I think it, it's just so valuable to have tools like that where you can get everybody on the same page, you know, especially with remote work where it can be really hard, you know, like we said, with time zones and things like that to make sure everybody not only knows what's going on, but has some sort of documented something to, to show what everyone needs to be doing and, and keeping everybody together on that sense. Yeah. And like search functionality too is like huge. Like yeah. how many times you think like, Oh, when, when did we talk about that? And right. Some more stuff going on. Like maybe you remember there was a good idea, but you don't remember what that idea was. You just remember something else that was talked about. And you're like, all right, I'm going to go find something that's like right in that same date range and <laughs> yeah. search through there. Yeah. I, I, I use that, that search function all the time. That's yeah, exactly. When you think, so your, your career and your position aside, when you think about career karma, what's the things that kind of get you most excited and, and like happy that you're able to, to be a part of this? So many things. So, I mean, if, for one thing, just this team, I mean, the, the leadership alone. So we, it's two twin brothers, Archer and Timur uh, Maester, and then Ruben Harris is our CEO they are they're like the most supportive like just awesome guys that you could possibly work for we're all, we're all up kind of around the same age so that, that that was a new thing for me too to be working for somebody who's you know kind of on my level in, in that sense yeah um but they're just they're great cheerleaders and not just for us but more importantly for th- our users so uh, app and you start the process one of the first things that you're encouraged to do is to Um, register for a a CEO kickoff event. So it's basically just a Zoom call where you meet with Ruben, not one-on-one, but in a group. Yeah, Um, everyone that signed up for that week or whatever. Yeah, and and you just get to talk to him, ask him questions, you know, directly. And I think that that personal touch is what really makes Career Karma different from from other other organizations in the coding bootcamp space in that it's not just about, hey, let's let's find a bootcamp for you. It's, yeah. hey, let's, let's find the one that's right for you. Let's, let's match you to the right one. And then let's get you prepared for the interview, for the application, for every, you know, all of that pre bootcamp stuff. Let's get you in and then continue to support you through the entire process and even throughout your career. So the, the idea with Career Karma, even though obviously we're, we're new, is yeah. that you know, we're not just providing career coaching and, and this kind of thing early on. The idea is to constantly be a, a presence for support and and mentorship throughout people's careers not just while they're in the boot camp yeah it's so one of the reasons i reached out to you on twitter even before i knew that you were going to be a guest on the show is like all of a sudden i think i like something on twitter and then all of a sudden i just kept seeing career karma like everywhere and and it was crazy to me because it seemed like all different types of resources and super helpful and you would think that like it'd be total chaos or disorganization for like all the different ways career karma is able to add value but it's not the case like i downloaded the app and that's one of the slickest things i've ever experienced and and i'm not actually going through uh like a career transition or anything i was just curious like can this app do kind of a lot of the things that you're saying and then there's other resources like the blog posts and the, the videos that you guys are constantly cranking out like the website's nice and clean. You can search all that stuff and find that it looks awesome. The, the application on the phone and, and just, I think I'm only on like day three or whatever. Cause I was like, Oh, let me prep for this, but then also see what career karma is about. Super user-friendly and kind of walks you through like exactly what you, you need to, right. to be able to do. So, uh, so far my experience with it without even me being like into it, like, Oh, I need a career change. I'm going to do right. this. I'm excited about it. Like as far as like the, the different uh, things that you guys are capable of doing. So you guys are definitely onto something and, and it kind of shows through all of the interactions that you guys get online and all the people that you've been bringing through this process. Career Karma, it, it doesn't cost anything to the, the end user, correct? That's correct. So anybody who wants to use Career Karma, it's completely free forever. The, you know, to, to be transparent, the, the, the way that we do, you know, generate revenue is that we 
you know, we don't, we never ask for your credit card information. We never get any money from you, but we have a set of partner boot camps. And yep. if you are, if, if you go through career karma and you apply and you get accepted to one of these, you know, top programs, we get a certain percentage of that tuition. So that's, that's basically our business model. So that way you're, you know, you're never paying us anything directly. You can use our service completely free for as long as you want. And, yeah. uh, and we only succeed if you end up succeeding by getting into one of these programs. Yeah. Yep. And then telling everyone about it and then, right. saying, Hey, I started at career karma and because your boot camp may not be the best boot camp for your friend because they have different needs or exactly. different locations. There's, there's all these different things. So that's one thing that I found being super cool, at least as far as the resources I've seen so far is there's, it's not like that you guys are staring anyone in, in one direction. It's no. truly do you want to understand and kind of find out where that best fit is and act more as that guide. I know there's uh, someone that was texting me that could have been like a career coach for me. I was like, ah, oh, no, I'm good. Like, <laughs> I'm not like, I've just kind of seen what this is about, but it, it's crazy how you guys have that stuff set up. And I asked you before we started the episode, but I guess we can, I can ask you right now too, how long has career karma been around now? Yeah. So career karma has only been around since um, about the middle of 2018. So, so we're pretty new, but we're growing really fast. I think right now, I, th I haven't checked recently but i think we're getting close to fifty thousand users on the app which is not bad so so we're really happy with that growth and we're expecting a really big 2020 as well yeah that's pretty sweet and so i another thing you said is that there was an accelerator where kind of Kur karma kind of helped get launched out into the the stratosphere where you guys are at now with the, the fifty thousand users yeah, so the our three founders uh, came out of Y Combinator, which is a sort of a startup accelerator. I I could be wrong about this, but I, I think they were, I think Uber came out of Y Combinator and some some other really big startup. Yeah, um, I know any accelerators I've ever heard of. It's super hard to get into for one. Yeah. So yeah, that that just kind of shows. And and one of the reasons why I asked about how long this has been around is because I'm just super impressed by by everything, especially like the app. Normally you you get an app from a startup and it's super clunky. It's not fleshed out and your guys's app has depth to it and stuff that even though I was like actively research trying to see all the things, I'm sure I didn't even click around <laughs> everywhere that I could have in there. Yeah, that, that's, that's really great to hear. I appreciate that. So the, the great thing about the app too, is that it was, it was built from scratch from our, our founders. So, and, and our, and our team of uh, devs, but they, Archer and Timor both, came out of boot camps themselves so oh gotcha yeah so that was that you know just a little backstory on them all, all three of our of the founders had careers in in, in investment finance okay. um, investment banking and they kind of got tired of that world and just, sure. yep. <laughs> um, so they were looking for something new so those two the two brothers went oh, shoot I think it was it's hack reactor an app academy, I think were the two that they went to. Okay. I can't swear to that, but, and so they, they learned development through, through those and then went to the Y Combinator with Ruben, who they, who they had met during that time and just built the app themselves. And so, uh, you know, I think, you know, it's great to hear, you know, your uh, words on kind of what you thought of the app, because it shows, you know, these are two people who had no experience um, with development, app development or anything like that. And then here they built this great app that is helping all these other people learn to do this, the same thing. So, so yeah, I mean, I think it shows that, that boot camps can be incredibly effective and, and yeah, so I, I, that's, that's really, it's great to hear that, that feedback about their, about the app. So. Yeah. And it's definitely unsolicited too. So, like, <laughs> right. um, and, and that's one of the things that I always, Whenever I see stuff, I'm always like, ah, it sounds too good to be true. And and so like I was trying to like find holes and, and whatnot. And if I would have ran into them, I wasn't gonna like call you out or anything on this. But like I really, at least from my outside experience of not knowing what to look for and what not to look for, I was just super impressed that if I really wanted to get into coding, I felt like this could have been the way to to guide me along that path. So yeah. Real yeah real user experience from someone that wasn't even interested in doing that, but it was like, man, this, this does seem like it's going to just give me that guide that I need if, if I did need anything like that. Yeah. That's, that's great to hear, especially because like, you know, I mentioned, I, I do a lot of 
work with um, search engine optimization. And so yeah. I, I'm, I'm very aware that one of the first things that comes up when you start typing in career karma into Google is, is career karma legit? <laughs> and so I'm always trying to find ways to answer that. So I, th I think you, you did a great job of helping me answer that just now. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and yeah, it can be, you can even take a, the snippet from this and kind of <laughs> do, yeah, do whatever yeah, you need sure. to. Yeah. That's as far as I can tell, it's legit to me. Uh, <laughs> perfect. So in the, the last few year and a half since I started my company where I'm actually able to help people with, regardless of whether they have investments or not, I've been able to actually help people now that have no assets or student loan debt and things like that. So that opened the door to a lot of boot camp graduates and boot camp students. And I've seen like how crazy it is. Like their whole life just kind of basically changes over that, that time period. Um, it takes them from going in one direction and it like rips apart the road, goes, builds a new one to a crazy opportunity. And I know that there's some people that don't necessarily have that nice, nice, clear path after that but for the most part everyone i've interacted it seems to be like a really awesome things like what does that mean for you to be able to help people have this career transition because you actually made a career transition yourself right yeah so i mean I, I as much as my career transition with career karma has been very different yep. than the ones that other people are going to be having with career karma I, I do feel sort of this kinship with with the people who are we're going through our, our program and, and then eventually going into coding boot camps. You know, I, I think part of what makes me feel really good about this work is, is the financial side, you know, speaking to, you know, kind of maybe your, maybe uh, more of your interest here is that one of the things that we're pretty passionate about teaching people about is income share agreements, which yep. are, a funding mechanism that right now, I think, you know, there are a few universities and colleges that, that offer them at the, you know, Purdue and University of Utah. But for the most part, they're reserved for job training programs, specifically coding yeah. boot camps. And the way these work is similar to the way Career Karma works in that, you know, the people who are offering them, the schools that are offering them don't succeed unless the students actually succeed. Yeah. So um, just, to, just a quick, like, quick and dirty explanation of how they work is that when you sign up for an, when you get approved for an ISA, you don't pay any tuition up front. Usually sometimes there'll be like a, a $250 deposit or something like that. Yeah. To um, show that you're, you're actually going to be committed to the process. Exactly. And all that. Yep. exactly. And so, but other than that, there's no upfront tuition, you know, cause some of these boot camps are, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. They're not, they're not cheap. Yeah. To normal education, they're cheap. Right. But yeah, not, not just like, Oh, I'm going to, I feel like dropping $16,000 over <laughs> six right. months. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely cheaper than a, a four year degree yep. usually, but, but still not chump change. So, so yeah, you, you don't pay tuition up front, and the agreement is that you, you don't pay any tuition while you're in the program and you won't pay any tuition until you start making above a certain threshold in a job that, you know, that you're trying to get. So if you're, if you're going to school to become a, a web developer and you finish the program, the boot camp, you don't pay your, you don't pay back any tuition until you have a job as a web developer making a certain amount of money. It's usually around $50,000. Yep. Um, not, you know, it, it varies, but I think that's, that's a pretty common rate. And if you don't just start making that income in a job that you're, that you're working toward, within a certain set amount of time, you don't pay anything. So I think the, the, with like Lambda school, I think the, the terms are, if you don't make $50,000 a year um, in a job that you're, that you went to school for and it's five years and you still haven't gotten that, then your whole tuition is waived. So yeah. No, yeah, you haven't gotten in five years. It's gonna be tricky to get it in that year six. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, I mean, the idea here is to really align the incentives of the student and and the institution to yeah. say that. Yeah, go for it. Oh, and I was just gonna say, which normal college institutions besides the very few that you happen to to know by name, just because there's that few of them, like the basic college university situation, they they're not incentivized to actually produce career paying jobs. Basically. Right. In fact, I mean, there, there are ways of looking at it to say that they're incentivized to not <laughs> do that. I mean, if, if you want to look at it 
uh, from a couple different angles. But, you know, and this isn't to say that income share agreements are right for everybody. You know, I, I'm not going to, you know, like for me, you know, since I already have a lot of student debt, yep. I, I would not suggest an income share agreement to someone like me. Sure. But, but they, you know, it, for a lot of people, they can be a way of getting this this opportunity that they otherwise wouldn't have. And this is partly because, you know, student loans aren't available. These federal student loans aren't available to boot camp students. Yeah. And, you know, there are a lot of scholarships, but, you know, ultimately they're, they're kind of limited. So it's, it's, a, it's a great way of, of expanding this opportunity to a lot of different people. And not only that, but some of them places like Thinkful, there might be a couple others that I'm forgetting right now, but offer living stipends as part of their, their income share agreement. So they'll give you, I think Thinkful will give you $1,500 a month added on to your income share agreement. So, you know, if you're obviously having to quit your job or, or work part-time while you're in a coding boot camp because they are yeah. very intensive, you'll still have a little bit of financial support there as well. Yeah. Yep. And these things are important to you to know that they're available and, and they're starting to grow too in popularity. So hopefully you'll have your options and choices. And the best thing that anyone can ever do, even if you are going to go like the traditional college route or, or anything, is just to be informed with what the different options are. And, and that's half the battle, just understanding what what you could possibly do. And then, then you can make your informed decision at that point. But I've looked at the income share agreements and just kind of comparing those things a little bit more expensive than if you were to get the loan outright. But there's a huge kind of safety and insurance factor of... Right well, we're going to basically guarantee you get a job, which right. you're not going to get that with the student loan option for, <laughs> exactly. for those schools and some of the student loan rates. And and I don't know if you guys have this, but I was searching like heck a few months ago to see what options are available for student loan refinances when you've gone through boot camp. And there's very few. And there was actually nothing that specifically said, hey, if you go to a code and boot camp and need to refinance your student loans, like here are the options. I basically had to like piece different wording together and then call in and say, Hey, this is how it's making it sound. Like, is this accurate in order to, to hunt that down for one of my clients? Right. So one topic, if you guys are able to hunt down that information and make it searchable, I think it would be helpful, especially with the growth of coding boot camps and, right. and a lot of people still going that traditional ro- loan route. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely look into that some more. I mean, I, most of, of what we've been, like I said, what we've been dealing with has been income share agreements and things like sure. that. Yep. But we have we have been looking at um, loans too, because there are several organizations that do offer loans, specific private organizations that offer yep. loans to coding boot camps. LEAF being one of them. Some of the other ones kind of escape me right now. But so, yeah, I, I think I think that's that's really important to note exactly what you said that knowing what options are out there. And so that's really what career karma is trying to do, not just with financing, but with boot camps in general. So this month we're um, in the process of, of releasing our full directory of about 450 boot camps that you can, yeah, that many that exist. Yeah. And there's probably more than that too, but these are just the ones that, you know, we're familiar with and um, seem to be, not seem to be, but the ones that we know are, are reputable. And so we'll be releasing this directory. You can actually go on the website now and, and see it, but we'll be releasing it in a more full scale system pretty soon. Uh, so you'll be able to go on there, look at, you know, compare different schools, see the, the costs, the different programs that they offer, whether or not they offer an income share agreement, whether they have scholarships available and things like that. So that's kind of our big priority right now is to get that out there because we want people to be able to have this information and in reviews. So that's the other big thing is that we're going to be offering reviews from actual alumni from each boot camp. Cool. So as we close the episode, I'm curious, since you are a career changer, what, what would be some advice to someone that's thinking about, well, should I make this career change to coding like what advice would you give them? And I know it's not the same kind of path, but there, there's a lot of overlaps I imagine as far as just kind of thinking through what this transition could look like. Yeah, I think my biggest advice would be, you know, the the first time that you feel that twinge of, man, maybe I hate my job. <laughs> immediately let yourself be open to opportunities. So that was, I think that was what worked for me was that, you know, I started realizing you know, I, I really don't like what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm glad that at that point, I 
opened myself up to other opportunities rather than saying, well, you know, I've, I've already kind of gone down this path. And it, it's kind of, you know, that fallacy of sunk costs where it's yeah. like, uh, yeah, I was just thinking that as you were saying it. Yeah. The, you know, this like, oh, I've already put, put so much time and, and money into this that, you know, I, it just doesn't make sense for me to, to switch. Well, I mean, that, that is, that is a fallacy, you know, if, if you're going to be, if you're going to be miserable and, and this isn't going to be a good, a good option for you, it's never going to, to become that, you know? So, yeah. so being open to other opportunities and seeing what's out there and, you know, it, and it's, and it's not just career karma. It's not just, you know, coding boot camps. There's, there are other job training opportunities out there. Companies specifically are starting to do this where they're offering, yeah. you know, Amazon is, is offering job training programs to its employees and things like this. So, so just be open, be open to these opportunities, listen to yourself, you know, listen to your conscience when it's saying, you know, this, this isn't right for me and, and uh, be open to those opportunities. Yeah. That's amazing advice. Cause yeah. How many times do you kind of see people keep going down that same path, even though they know that's not the best thing and, and they're never going to be kind of fulfilled going that way. Yep. Well, th there's so many different crazy things going on. And, and that's one thing that you don't realize when you're, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, hopefully, I think a lot of people start to understand this the further they get along, but then they think, oh, it's too late. I don't think there's ever a too late situation. Right. I can almost argue too, there's almost always a never too early thing too. <laughs> right. um, it's just kind of when, when the opportunity is there, what, what are you going to do to actually make it possible? Because there's, there's sure going to be obstacles in the way, but you just kind of have to work through those things if it's something that's important to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show today, Chad. Yeah, I'm going to be getting this out. I, I encourage anyone who's listening to this to, to reach out to Chad and, and specifically, what are the best ways that people could find out more about you and Career Karma? So I'm, you know, I'm on Twitter at Chad M. Crabtree. Definitely follow Career Karma on Twitter at career underscore karma. You can also go to our blog, which, you know, we're publishing stuff constantly. So that's careerkarma.com slash blog. But also just go to the Career Karma website, check it out, download the app. I mean, even if you're not interested in uh, starting a career as a coder or a software engineer or something, check it out. You might, might be surprised. So you can, you can do that by, directly by going into uh, our website or you can go into the App Store or Google Play and find us there. Yeah, awesome. One funny thing that I saw on your website. So I started out in the app, but then I was like, oh, maybe I should kind of research this a little bit more before I interview and one of the cool animations that's on the, the homepage, and I don't know if you're responsible for this or you, that you're aware of this, but there's a, an animation of people, all different types of people helping up a person. Right. And then that person's up. So they, they've kind of reached an area of somewhat success. It kind of is what I'm imagining. And then they help up the next person and they kind of keep uh, taking that opportunity that I've made it. Now I'm going to help the next person. And I think that's a lot of what Career Karma is about, right? Yeah, exactly right. I'm, I'm glad you noticed that. So I mean, I, that, I didn't have anything to do with that, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I could take credit for that. But, yeah. but at other parts on, on the site, you'll see, you know, like in the FAQ section, it'll say, you know, is, is Career Karma free? And, you know, the answer is, you know, it's absolutely free. The only thing that we ask is that you help somebody else up behind you. Yeah. So that's, that's really, that's kind of our mission statement is that you pull somebody else up once you've made it up. And, and that, that's really the, the mission and motto of Career Karma. Awesome. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of what my show is about too. Why I have awesome guests like you come on is, Hey, you, you have this unique perspective and knowledge and let's kind of share it. And even if it connects with one person kind of helps them through something that that's amazing. And that person's going to go and want to help another person or two. And, and it doesn't have to only be one person. These things can magnify out to be substantially greater. So it's one of the cool things about technology and an SEO that you work on is to help people find, find these things that they right. want to to know more about. So I appreciate you coming on the show today, Chad. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for listening to Techie Personal Finance Bootcamp. You can find show notes by visiting levelupfinancialplanning.com and finding the podcast page. You'll also be able to find strategy guides, videos, and cheat sheets to help you take your financial confidence to the next level. If you feel this episode has added a ton of value for you, please rate and share this with friends and colleagues. Catch you next time on Techie Personal Finance Bootcamp.